Hey there, and thanks for tuning in to Netflix and Chill, episode 13. Today we're going to be talking about more of the Harley Quinn set. My name is Jim. And I'm Daniel. And uh, what do we got going on here first? We got quite a few things, actually. We've got uh, finally a nice flood of dials to talk about. Um, we also will try to get to talking a little bit about the Infinity War, uh, maybe a little bit on the meta right now and what we're looking at, but the big focus, like Jimmy said, is going to be on War of Light 2.0, yeah. Harley Quinn edition. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, the joke there is that we've gotten a few more lantern characters revealed, and that includes Scarecrow, who's a yellow lantern, yes. a green lantern version of Harlequin, which I did not expect at all. And possible reveal of a Black Lantern Harlequin? It was a Black and Red Lantern. I didn't see the unboxing video. I think it literally just went up today. Um, and they haven't posted the dial on the realms yet. But one of the guys in my chat told me that there's a Black and Red Lantern Harlequin. And like so like two different ones? Or she no, has it's both. the same one. She has both. Which is cool because her ah. costume is Black and Red. Um, but I guess her first two clicks are all brown. So she's got hypersonic, poison, impervious, and perplex. Yeah. And she, but she's like two hundred points. Well, I mean, so still, that's it makes neat. sense. Um, so hopefully we can find some information on her, if not during the podcast before the next one. Which unfortunately, I think the set's going to be coming out before we can do another one. Yeah. Because you're going to PAX. That's right. It's coming out in the middle of that week that I'm going to be gone. But at that point. I think that enough neat stuff has been revealed to justify getting a brick, and we've got, you know, the methods of being able to do so. What I think we need to do is somehow get in on this, like, free brick action. We see all the, uh, these other people who are getting early release stuff that they're able to release on their channel. We need this crap. Yeah, doing the unboxings. We will totally do all the unboxing videos that Wiz could possibly want, and character reviews, and whatever else. They want. That's right. Come on, whiz kids, throw us yeah. a bone here. I almost said Games Workshop. Which <laughs> cool side note, they're teaming up, I think, for Dice Masters, so you can expect some Warhammer Dice Masters in the future. That's different. I'm actually interested in possibly playing because I just think that would be cool. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Have like Magnus the Red and Dice Masters. I <laughs> that would be ridiculous. I feel like Wiz <laughs> I'm sorry. Because there there have been a few retweets from Wiz Kids Games Twitter of our videos, so I don't know what is actually watched or if they just mindlessly retweet things. No, I guarantee you they watch at least a little bit. Yeah. So, like, we well, try to be nice, but I know, at the same but time... I just have to say this. Freaking Games Workshop and WizKids combining is, like, a gaming nightmare. No, it's going to be like, wonderful. I like it. It's going to be $20 per booster pack for those stupid, those stupid Dice Masters packs if they do that. In a totally unrelated <laughs> note, uh, the new Infinity War boosters are going to be... More expensive. Because they are larger, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. The general ones are going to be normal, right? There are no general ones. I was actually listening to... They don't have a five booster pack anymore. I was listening to the ClicksCast guys right. on uh, the Realms, and I guess the way that they were explaining it is it's literally every single booster in your 10 booster brick will be uh, four normal size bases and one 2x2. Two two. So it's actually going to be like a bigger... It's brick almost like six. box size. Yeah, but, so, so you're going to have mm. ten colossals per brick. Right. Like, gross. You buy one brick, where are you going to put all this plastic? Like, just <laughs> throw it in the corner. You just so, have this so these pile of colossals. Guys, how do they get this information before us, Dan? Well, they probably, what is their inside info? I mean, it's probably just out there. I just missed it. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I have a life, and I also have gotten back into 40K, so uh, I don't have as much time to do all of the homework. True. And, like... We kind of, our, like, podcasts kind of come out at different times. Yeah. So, like... Yeah, we did the last one, like, four days ago. Yeah. You're welcome, everybody. Yeah. We're trying to, to get it out there more frequently, because we like it, that you guys like it, and it's fun to watch the view counter go up and the down thumbs come... Like... Yeah, come, come up pouring. <laughs> oh, well. Whatever. Yep. So, <laughs> what... <laughs> I don't know. Last night, I was trying to work on another video, a... Um review of kickstarters and i did one video before and it was pretty fun it kickstarters running real dry right now but i noticed that there was a podcast <laughs> section and i was like what in the world would somebody be trying to fund of a podcast we have a mic on a table and you talk about things so i go in Makeup. there yeah there is a guy there there's a group 
And of course, they're doing Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop games per their words. And they were needing like $3,000. And I was like, what in God's name for? So their advertisement video was literally just a picture. Like, you know, it was, it was a white and black JPEG with about an hour and 18 minutes of just audio of their game and their group. And it was atrocious. It was absolutely horrible. And I'm like, spend $50 and go and get a mic from like Best Buy or something and you'll be golden, you, you know, your whole problem is fixed. But Don't give away all our secrets, come on now. Yeah, but they're, <laughs> they're uh, what was it? They had like a $500 uh, offering thing or whatever they do. What, what do they do? It's like your backer rewards yeah. for $500 was to design a tattoo that the one that the guy would get. Oh, that's the worst idea ever. I would totally spend five hundred dollars to get someone to put a tattoo penis, a uh, penis yeah. on his I face. Think that's all. That's all anybody <laughs> would want to do. But he did say that there was restrictions. But all of that said, okay. yeah, I thought it was real weird, and I don't know where I was completely getting with that. But it was a horrible, horrible Kickstarter thing. I, oh. I gave up on the video because there's no good idea on Kickstarter right now. And if you guys uh, listen to us, like, sorry, we just crushed your hopes and dreams. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the very slim chance that they're one of our regular listeners. And that you <laughs> recognize what we're describing. I'm sure it's a dime a dozen approach here, so I'm sure it's fine. You're, you're going to post this, and like 20 minutes later, minus three followers. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, uh, Suddenly three thumbs down on every video you've ever posted. Four, because they're adding to the one who always downvotes. <laughs> yeah, I'm really curious about that. Like, who is it? The Just most put a consistent... comment so we can, we can <laughs> see what's going on. But every time we bring it up, I guarantee you that just fuels the fire. Yeah. So for every video you ever post, a little bit more like, hatred. Just, just that one thumbs down. He's like clicking it more aggressively each time. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like listening to you guys, but screw you. Thumbs down. Die. Yeah, it's probably because we get at least one thing wrong every video. <laughs> and and we ramble for the first 10 minutes every video. Yeah. What, what time is it right now? We're at 7.30. We so, got two and a half minutes left of rambling. That's right. Or we could we could pick it up right now, and we get some bonus points for getting on topic quickly. What is our first figure that we're wanting to look at from this Harlequin right. set? Well, um, it depends on who you want to talk about the most, because I really want to talk about King Shark. But Go for it. I feel like he's your your style. I do like King Shark. But all I'm going to say, I'll, I'll say my little bit, and you can finish up with him. Okay. I want to I want to get King Shark for the main reason of my dream shark team. I want to play Armagon, the I shark. I saw that coming. I'm, I figured you would. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, and, and uh, the old Mako from the indie set. You remember that one? He had, like, charge, exploit, three damage. Yeah, I think I've, I've still got him. Yeah, so I've got this dream of playing a bunch of sharks, and I got a second Batman with the shark. So I have two of those Ooh. sharks now. Tiger Shark's really good, too. Yeah. And I've got him. He's so actually it's just super dude. an addition to my shark team that I will play one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Is right. that it? Okay, yeah, here we it. go. Now you can talk about that. <laughs> like, I was just super pumped because I got another shark for my shark team. Yeah, so I really like what they're doing with the the also, whole Suicide Squad thing yeah. right now as far as the, the underlying trait that they're giving these characters because it really supports the idea of a theme team, like a, a workable theme team to give you a strategic advantage more than just your theme team prob control. So this character, King Shark, can be played at two point values. He can be played at 90 or 50, which is a real bargain once you get into that point bracket. He's so broken. He's super good. So he never has so a move good. and attack power, but that is because he has one built into he a trait. He doesn't need it. Well, what? I, well the thing is... Okay, that, he kind of needs it. Yeah. The thing is, you know, he's a water character. He's King Shark, so it's totally thematic, but you need water. And the reason is he has a trait called Me and My Chum, and he has sidestep, so he always had sidestep. At least that's a little bit good. But as a free action, if King Shark occupies water terrain, move him up to his speed value. So you're going to need something to either generate water terrain Hydro or, man. in this case, you are probably going to be running a theme team if you're wanting to keep this guy super tough. So you're going to get that theme team bonus anyway to try to pick the map, in which case you make sure that there's water terrain. The good thing about this is... You can run and attack somebody if they die or something. Try to stick close to water terrain so you can use sidestep to then activate the free action to move and do another attack. Because this guy has a base move and a 9. And freaking 4 damage and 11 attack. And it for gets 90 better. points. So, <laughs> just covering the stats here. First click on his 90 point dial. He's got 9 speed, 11 attack. 
a 17 defense with toughness, and a 4 damage with uh, special white damage power, and also his movement power is flurry. So, so, hold on. Let me just jump in. You get in the water, you su- free action, then you sidestep, and then you flurry with a 4 freaking damage for 90 points. Like, take 8 to the dome. He's nuts. But he, he has standard so combat abilities other than the dolphin symbol. So he's going to be taking pushing damage. He doesn't have indomitable, but he's really good for the points anyway. So you don't have to really worry that much about that. I'm going to put supreme intelligence on him. Make him <laughs> the sh- smartest shark ever. That's pretty great. Sh- okay, the white damage power is called Giant Hungry Shark. He has exploit weakness and shape change. So beginning to dial that shape change is going to be really annoying because I hate trying to target character with a shape change, especially if they have tied me up because I'm literally just putting action tokens just to waste my time. You get that little middle finger pop up yeah. every time you see that five or six. I it's freaking great. hate it. And then what was he's the other got, half of that? You said he's uh, exploit weakness and shape change. Uh, yeah. Can so you, you can't use it together anymore. No. no. You never have been able to. So you had to choose... It was charge blades exploit, not flurry. Right, and blades and exploit work together. Flurry and blades work together, but but flurry and exploit don't. So right. as far as being able to use those powers together, it's really going to be about tar- target priority because you've got a situation where you can either do a bunch of damage to somebody who doesn't have a damage reducer or has a low damage reducer, like toughness, or you can just make sure your damage goes right through somebody with impervious or something like that. So it's well-rounded, not necessarily versatile with that the flurry is yeah. better against invincible yeah because you'll deal four damage total. right you don't penetrate from and and they don't have a chance of right. reducing it with impervious but then you can penetrate the impervious or the invulnerable um and then it's better against toughness right. super senses not Any, anything yeah, else. And, and everything <laughs> yeah. except for except for impervious basically <laughs> yeah and then the rest of his dial his second click and through his fourth click he has Plasticity instead of flurry, he ends up getting blades, claws, fangs. Keeps toughness until the late half of his dial, where he gets invul- uh, invulnerability with a 16 defense. His damage always stays at at least a three. His attack goes down from an 11 on his first click to nine by the end, but his last three clicks have steel energy. So even though and the last two have flurry, yeah. And if you're pushing and stuff, that steel energy is still going to keep you around. The issue is he's got that nine attack which in a lot of cases, modern, it's going to be really difficult to hit something with that. But the great thing about him and theme teams for something like the Suicide Squad, and it looks like by other characters like Catman, uh, common number five, he also has the same power, same um, trait, which is only six of us. So I'm pretty sure they're trying to run the secret six and then also potentially Suicide Squad. I don't know, because it doesn't say anything specifically about... um, what team it doesn't say anything about teams at all yeah yeah so but you know it'll be cool for theme teams so he has stealth but only if your force has three or more characters he has improved movement hindering if only but only if your character has five or more characters and then you modify all combat values by plus one but only if your force has exactly six characters so that's super great because in his starting click he's going to have 10 movement 12 attack 18 defense five damage on his lowest click, he's going to have an 8 speed, 10 attack, 17 defense, and 4 damage. But as soon as you lose a character, they lose that power because now you only have 5 characters. Real fast. Does it say standard character or just character? It just says this character. It says if it has exactly 6. That's it. All right. So uh, this carnage we keep talking about, every time you lose a pog, you generate a pog. You yeah. stay at 6 forever. <laughs> They're 10 yeah, but that would pogs. be a real low point. No, I mean, you just, every you time, in, every time yeah, you, you lose anyone, you retaliate and create another pog. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's easy to stay at that number six. So you're saying, like, like have four, four or have, like, three or four people on your team? And then Carnage and a couple pogs. Okay. Every time someone gets KO'd, Carnage can retaliate, drop another pog, and keep you at that six. The pogs are still useful, and you keep your shark super just beastly. Because he's got improved movement, hindering, stealth jumps out of water and kills you and plus one to all of his stats yeah the thing is he's super he's nuts he's super great yeah biggest issue is as soon as you don't have access to water it really cuts down the potential you will be expecting from him at the beginning of the game but his damage output is still just stupid so if you can at least keep him with stealth like they either have to be a stealth buster or they have to come to you So if nothing else, you at least have that going for you. Yeah. So I think he's definitely a good character. You definitely want that water 
on your team or on your map, I guess, you know. I really like uh, Hydra Man, and then we got another water water character. No, it's just a name where I, I got. That there's thing. a lot of old characters yeah, that would be I don't know if there's it. a lot of new characters. That, the that... best character, in my opinion, that had that crap with Submerged. The trait that or the yeah. the feet. The only prerequisite is the water or the dolphin symbol, and if you are in water, then lines of fire to you are blocked. So you basically, you know, you're just under the water. You run that with Tempest from the Crisis set. Oh yeah, he makes the water around he, him. Yeah, any there, anything within three spaces. So basically, a bubble of about seven spaces is water, and then you have a bunch of characters with submerged on them. And yep. you just move around with this invisible team, including this guy who could just run right out of there and beat the crap out of him. Yeah. I still really like Hydro Man because he becomes like a giant with the water and then a colossal and he gets bonus damage and then this guy gets to like fly out of it. So yeah. I think that'd be cool. Let's just do like a thousand point like water, water battle. We'll get Vega's animal theme team. <laughs> I made a water team way back when. I actually went and bought all of the characters for it and then I never ended up doing anything with it because I didn't make it to that event. And it never swung back around. So yeah. I, I spent like... Sad. I, I think I spent like $12 on the super rare Crisis Aquaman or something. I don't even think it was Crisis. But it was the Aquaman from the alternate world Flashpoint thing going on there. I don't remember what it said. Anyway, what's the next character after King Shark? All right. It is one I want to talk about because it's cool. <laughs> it's a throwback to an old piece I really liked. It is the Yellow Lantern Scarecrow. Woo! All right, so this guy, he's um, all right. I can't really sing too many praises or anything. But he's got running shot, psychic blast, 17 defense, uh, flight, and three damage top dial. No willpower or indomitable. He has a trait, uh, perplexed, but only to modify a combat value minus one. When Scarecrow uses it, calculate the target's defense. If it has a 15 or less... After resolutions, deal the target one penetrating damage. Very situational. Not the best, not the worst. Random damage is nice. He's got penetrating for four clicks and then poison for two clicks. He can kind of be a harasser. But, I mean, I just like it because it's Yellow Lantern Scarecrow. Again, he's not terrible. I'll probably use him in Sealed because, like, Running Shot, Psychic Blast, three damage isn't bad. But for 85 points, you get stuff like Green Arrow and Tidal Characters, Doctor Strange. You get Shifting Focus, Deadpool. There's just so many good pieces in this point bracket, and he just kind of doesn't compete. But it's Yellow Lantern Scarecrow, so he's awesome. He gets an honorable mention. Wait, so he's he's an uncommon? Yes. He... What? Wait. So you were saying that other characters is in, in his point bracket? Yeah, in his okay. point bracket, not in his rarity bracket. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Yeah, because now it's all about the more yeah. rare characters being better in the general game, so I yeah. wouldn't really expect it to be a game breaker. Yeah, I wish he would have been like a Chase Yellow Lantern Scarecrow, like 60 points, 4 damage, Psychic Blast, yes. just, just <laughs> knocking just, people out. Just beef out those stats. <laughs> yeah, same I'm... exact dial, just drop him 20 points and make him like... Plus two to every stat. Yeah. Then he's the perfect chase. <laughs> I'm just a little upset that we haven't had Renee Montoya revealed yet. I guess they're saving best for last. Nobody cares about her except, just, like, you just... and two people. Yeah. Like, if it was Rorschach, who isn't even, like, he's DC, but he's not. Like, everyone would be like, <laughs> oh my god, this is so cool. But, like, they created Rorschach so they didn't have to kill the question. That's right. But everyone loves Rorschach because they killed him. Like, yeah. if well, they would have just killed... their personalities ended up being different. Oh, well, yeah. But if they would have just killed the question, then he would have been, like, a way more popular hero. He's dead now. Well, but they didn't kill him the same way that they killed <laughs> Rorschach. True. And that also, like, totally defeats the purpose of, like, let's make Rorschach to keep question alive. Well, Stab. he died many years later <laughs> in the comic book history. All right, next character I want to talk about, and then you can talk about that one, right? The last one there, Lashina? What? What? Isn't that Lashina? That says Chase Lantern. I thought that said Chase Lashina. There is a Lashina in the I mean, you can talk about Lashina. I don't want to talk about Lashina. I don't care about her. (laughs) I'm going to talk about freaking Big Varda. My favorite female superhero in all of comic books. The only reason is because the old Varda click that just like boom-tubed everywhere. I I like Big Varda. Anyway, so she's uh, an uncommon prime. Big Varda number 023... B. So, of course. Boy. <laughs> Boy. She's got the apocalypse. 
Birds of Prey and Justice League. Keyword, she's 100 points, has the Justice League of America team ability, flight, the standard attack, defense, and damage symbols. So uh, she has about seven clicks, seven clicks exactly, actually. And she starts out with a 10 movement, 11 attack, 18 defense, and a four damage. Of those powers, two of them are white special powers. Her uh, movement power is personal boom tube. She has facing teleport when Big Barty uses it. After resolutions, you may roll a d6. If the result is greater than the square is moved, make an attack. So we've seen things like this where you have running shot, but you ignore things when you're moving through it. It's basically an improved running shot that uses phasing teleport at the same time with special wording to allow you to do it. This is a little bit more complicated because you make the movement first and then you roll a d6 kind of throwing it up in the air. So you have a hard time planning around it. You're like, I'm going to put this character here. They're going to be in danger because I'm hoping to be able to make an attack. Roll that die. Oh, well, I rolled a freaking two and I rolled four. I moved four spaces. Suddenly you lose that option. So... I don't really like that that much. I would rather have a standard movement attack power, like charge or something, but the great thing is that this doesn't limit you to range or close combat. So it just says after making the roll, you can make an attack. So you could get into close combat, you can get into range, it's more versatile than other, you know, charge mm -hmm. or running shot. And she has a four range, so you could still make use of that range if you want to. And then her white damage power is coordinated attack. She has empower, but instead affects friendly characters within three squares. That's freaking the bomb. She yeah. can use it on characters within three squares, and they don't even have to be in line of fire or any type of like semblance of adjacency. Yeah. They just know that there's this BA like lady just beating people up. <laughs> Somewhere around. And they're like, that is cool. I'm going to go kill someone. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty awesome because you can empower a whole team and you don't have the disadvantage of being so close that you could get energy explosion or quaked by another character just because you happen to clutter up. And she also has uh, that 11 attack with super strength, 18 defense with invincibility. Uh, about mid-dial, third and fourth click, she has sidestep with psychic blast, 18 defense with impervious. By the end of her dial, she's got a 9 attack. She ends up puttering out to a 3 and then 4 damage with close combat expert with a 16 defense with toughness. And the whole dial, she kind of phases back and forth between sidestep and then that phasing teleport special power. So you're going to be relying on that D roll, that D6 roll, to try to get this character in a position to attack. And that is kind of what makes me wary of this character on any type of competitive level because you can't rely on that from a strategic standpoint. Like most characters are able to move and attack at least four to five spaces based on their standard movement. That is above average from what you'd expect from a D6 roll consistently. So you're definitely going to be able to move one or two most of the time, but you might as well use sidestep anyway. So I honestly, I'm not a fan of that power. But I like having a new rendition of Big Barda. So I, if I were to get her, I'd be excited to play her. The only reason that I would say I'd consistently field her is to get the benefits of that Empower, which I would build a team around. Yeah. Because that's a super good power. She's only 100 points, which is a good building block for a team. It's still a little bit more of an investment than you'd expect for just a support character, so I would also hope to get some attack mileage out of her. I just wouldn't plan on it. Yeah. All right, that was a pretty good summary. Yeah. I, I can't really add anything <laughs> you pretty much hit it thanks so i'm just gonna do a quick mention of the super rare prime we've gotten that dial spoiled it is the green lantern harley quinn um and we're definitely seeing a trend here of the rare prime i think being stronger than the super rare prime because of the ridiculousness of jakeem and how just overly valuable he has been for so long uh, so they're making the Rare Prime the powerhouse and the Super Rare Prime a really cool piece to have that feels good to play but isn't a must-have. And this totally fits it. I mean, she's a Green Lantern piece, and she feels the dial is, like, I don't want to call it generic because it's Harley Quinn, but it definitely has the Green Lantern feel. Top dial, hypersonic, telekinesis, energy shield deflection and barrier and invulnerability, and then um, a special perplex power. So, like, it's kind of feels like most Green Lantern dials do. Um, later, she gets Charge, Quake, Giant Reach 3, so she ends up becoming more of a melee beast than most Green Lanterns would. So that's kind of cool. 
Um, but there's no huge reason to go out of your way to get her. But if you get her, it'll be really fun to play her. One thing I really like about her dial is she has 7 clicks, and every single click has 3 damage. And she also maintains movement attack the whole dial. She gets a couple clicks of pulse wave, uh, good damage reducers the whole dial. So, like, she's always going to be useful, but she's just not that over-the-top ridiculous piece. So it's cool to have her. You want to collect her. You don't have to spend $120 to get her. So... I'm very okay with it. I, I like would it. say that the char- the people who would definitely want to get your hands on this character, people who play uh, Arkham Asylum theme teams, I don't know if you would normally have access to something like yeah, true. Uh, Telekinesis. And this character really adds a lot for mobility and support because yeah. you've got the Green Lantern core ability coming into a, an evil theme team most of the time with Arkham Asylum. So you're able to move around your whole team, Telekinesis, and then she's got barrier... Uh, at her disposal as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. She, so she she's definitely good. I would like to get her. I will if I pull her. I will be very happy. Um, but again, it's not a mandatory. Absolutely must have end all be all piece. But it's definitely like Jimmy said. If you're playing Arkham Asylum, she's a great piece to have. She's kind of supporty, kind of attack based, uh, always useful. So she def- also looks super neat. Yeah, and the dot the the figure looks great. Yeah. So. Uh, did you want to talk about another, or should I jump into the chase of Green Lantern? Oh, the God of God, the God of Light. Yeah, the right? God of Light. Yeah, just go ahead and throw All in right. on that one. So I'm gonna jump back into this one, and I'm a little bit disappointed because I feel like they almost did this dial really well, uh, but I'm not a huge fan of the speed power, kind of the same way as Big Barda. Uh, so he's got the, the all the chases have kind of the same trait: opposing characters within six squares and lower point value. Uh, on this one, they can't use stealth, which is amazing. He's 175 points, so you can pair him up with the low point value beta ray bill. So you force them to have to come within six spaces. If they do, they can't use stealth. I really like that combination. Um, and then he has his speed power, I am everywhere. It's power, place Green Lantern, God of Light, in a square that's within half his speed value, and then make an attack. This is almost really good. It auto breaks away because it's a placement, so you don't even have to roll or anything. Um, so it gets you away from tie up pieces. You have an eight range, so you can move top dial, you have tw- uh, 12 speed, so you can move six spaces and then shoot another eight. So you have a 14 space threat range, which is really great, but it's only an attack. So you can't use any uh, range actions or close actions, anything else. So no pulse wave, which he has top dial, or psychic blast, which he has at the end of the dial. Um, he has 4 damage for 3 clicks, 3 damage for the rest. He gains prob control, gets enhancement at the end. He also has top dial defense power, uh, barrier and impervious, friendly characters adjacent to Green Lantern, God of Light, or one of his barrier markers, modify defense by plus 1. So he's handing out that plus 1 D modifiers. It's nice. I like it a lot. Uh, and then his damage power is I am light. It gives enhancement and range combat expert. Opposing characters hit by his attacks, modify defense by minus one for this turn. So he's really like a great all-around piece, except his speed power I feel is a little underpowered because he has pulse wave and range combat expert but can't use either when he teleports. Like, I wish they would have made the power running shot or power play screen lantern, do all that stuff. So that way he has either or. He's not locked into just having his move and attack makes his attacks kind of useless. So you kind of need to set him up as a sniper or just taxi your team into position turn one, and then I guess you should be in range turn two. So a little bit of uh, just one small complaint, but he does have uh, Green Lantern and and Quintessence, so like he's got a lot of good stuff going for him. I don't want to make him sound terrible or complain at all because I do really like this dial. I'm hoping if we pull a chase, it's this one or Lex Luthor. I'd rather this one. But just my little critique is I wish he had running shot or some type of move and attack or even sidestep in addition to his teleporting power. Yeah. I think that it is all right. So I'd say that it brings him a little bit below the super competitive threshold. Yeah. But in a character like this, the I kind of see it as the slow, deliberate god type. And you definitely saw formats that didn't necessarily have move and attacks on characters of that type mm-hmm. previous to the newest trend of just putting a move and attack on everybody because it seems necessary for most players but what is great about this character is that 
a lot of visibility. One, he has an eight range, so you can really post him somewhere and still be a threat. You're really going to be controlling yeah. the other person's movement. What is great about him is he has so many powers that are based on his placement that will help his team. Mm -hmm. So he teleports, but I wouldn't really necessary. I wouldn't really say that that's like this is necessary to do damage. This teleportation is necessary to get where I need to go to help my team while still having the small advantage of getting to make an attack against somebody who might take at least some damage. And it does suck that he can't he doesn't have access to his powers while he's doing that. But I would say that the attack in itself is a benefit where else you would normally have like, you know, the, the just a normal phasing. Yeah, the but phasing my, that's in the middle of a die. My issue is like if you look at cable, uh the common from Deadpool and the X whatever. Yeah. Um, that that cable is almost really good, but he has the same power. Where you move half speed, and then you can make an attack. Right. And it just it doesn't really get there because everyone has some form of damage reducer. Everyone has some form of getting around the power, and you don't want your hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy five point tent pole to just like not even be able to hit swarm. You know what I mean? Or yeah. hit Jakeem when he's turtled up or do any damage to anyone like you want to you want to have some way of getting through a defense power because there's so many good ones that you can stack now yeah well i think cable is a different case just because he's built to be an attacker this guy what i like about him is one opposing characters within six squares and a lower point value can't use stealth that's very reminiscent of the old super rare version of the original like the train conductor uh green lantern i don't remember i think it was from the batman set way back when Mm -hmm. and that was one of the first times that you saw something like that where it was like if you hit a character they lose stealth or with it if you're within a certain distance of them they don't have stealth and this was before ignores hindering so it was like busted so it feels super neat to have something like that again so using that power to teleport and then attack somebody and now you're just in range to be able to eliminate stealth on a, a very big target or he's got the uh friendly characters adjacent to him or some of his barrier markers, modify defense by plus one. So you move, yeah. and he's get got... next to somebody, and attack. They get a plus defense. Yeah, and they gain enhancement off of him. So right. like, like I'm, I'm not again. I'm not saying anything bad about this piece. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful design. I really like it. Uh, I, I guess we're again spoiled by the Kingdom Come counterpart chase. Yeah, like Shazam. Same thing with this Green Lantern. Like we're so used to a 170 point Green Lantern with a 20 defense with telekinesis, running shot, range combat expert. Like, we're so used to that dial, we're paying five points more and lower defense, no move and attack. I mean, no, we do, but it's not the same. It's a little bit different. Um, so yeah. it's, but again, they're, they're trying to bring the game back into a little bit of a balance. And I, I will say we definitely got... The Kingdom Come pieces are just incredibly strong. Yeah. And, this guy does feel rounded. And yeah. I like how they, they took away some of his his combat ability to emphasize his more utility aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the one other thing, you move next to somebody, now they have plus one defense, they have plus one damage from enhancement, and if you hit a character with that attack, then that character has a minus one to their defense this turn just because they were struck yeah. by an attack, even if it doesn't do damage. Mm -hmm. So that's super cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, it's utility. You're paying 175 points for somebody who's not going to be making consistent damage because his movement attack really mm -hmm. limits your potential. One thing I do like is that he does have the Quintessence team ability. That is really good. Um, I, I personally, if he was about 140 to 150 points, I think you'd see him as a must-have like top-tier piece. But for 175, he's just he's not swinging in his weight class for competitive. But like casual, he'll be great. And and I, you might see him some on the competitive scene. I don't know. Um, depends how he interacts with some other pieces. Yeah, I wouldn't but, think that you would. The one thing he's, he's like almost there, but not. yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking since he has the Green Lantern core ability, it would be super cool if you would be able to move characters using that power action. But it says that you place them in a square within half. So you, at no point you're taking a movement action, so you can't even carry somebody for that placement. Right. So that would be cool, too, if you could just move up to half carrying some characters and then make an attack. But, yeah, it limits that aspect as well. Yeah, I think if he had, like, a split point value and he had, like, one at 75 or 80 points and it was only three or four clicks, 
then he would be like used a lot as a utility piece on the lower point dial, especially just because stripping stealth makes teams like Doc Ock viable again. Because right now Doc Ock just can't handle Unimind because he can take stealth, drop quintessence, and win anyway. Yeah. Uh, if you can get around the stealth, then he has to keep the power cosmic, um, and then you've got a game going. But as it is... <laughs> I wonder how that interacts with the Batman team ability, because I don't know how the new one reads. I think it just grants stealth. Okay, because I know the old like one... just like new power cosmic and quintessence grant willpower. Right, because I know the old one just said... Basically, it copied the definition of stealth, but it wasn't qualified itself as stealth. Yeah, I so, think now it just grants the power. Yeah, okay. Because that would be more reasonable to actually hit things like the Batman and uh, Batman ally team ability, too. Yeah. All right, so that is uh, that guy. Yeah. He's pretty cool. So is that pretty much it for... Those were the ones I was really excited about. Um, I don't want to just talk about nothing but dials for two podcasts Because you can read them yourself. Um, if you've got more dials you want commentary on from us, post it in the comments, uh, message me on the realms, uh, that's Al Capone, A-L-K-A-P-W-N, um, Jimmy, shout your Twitter. Woo, I don't, I don't know, you don't ship games handle? somewhere, my twiddle, <laughs> my twiddle handle. <laughs> your twiddle handler. <laughs> yeah. Well, Whatever. either way, even after the set comes out, we're going to be doing the five-minute meta on pieces that we think have meta potential, and then Filthy with a chance of meta on characters that are more highly competitive casual, uh, and then also things that are really low-end casual. Filthy yeah. with a chance of meta is kind of the catch-all for yeah, characters just... that aren't necessarily going to be a tournament-ready character. If it's a cool character, you'll find it there. If we think you could see it, not necessarily top table, but you think we think you could see it throughout the course of like a, a w, uh, yeah, WKO or a ROC, whatever... Like, if you think, we think you might see it there, we'll talk about it in the five-minute meta. Yeah. So check them out there. Yeah. Next. Let's, uh, since we're kind of mentioning meta stuff, I do want to talk about Jakeem and how he kind of has been slighted twice now. I feel bad for Slighted? Yeah. Well, the thing is... He, like, dominates every non-major event. And then WizKid's just like, oh, we got a major event coming out, let's, let's just drop a new overpowered piece. Goblin King. Okay, Goblin King won that one. Nerf him. Jakeem's going to win another one. Not today. Unimine. <laughs> and I think that that... I don't know if I should say that's fine because Jakeem is still a really busted piece, but I think it's just showing what is effective in the game, and I think it really needs to show kids where to halt the brakes in their design scheme. Well, I think they tried with Unimine making his low point dial only five clicks, but they gave him a stop click. Stop with the pick a power stuff pick a power is cool it's thematic in a lot of circumstances to express a character who really has anything available to them yeah and like i could see a vision with pick a power being kind of a thing yeah and like stuff like miko minoru totally yeah. makes sense because the character is literally choosing what she does in the, the staff moment. of one like yeah so <laughs> it's the definition of a pick a power is her but they did that well and you also see that characters with pick a power aren't necessarily on the top, like with Al Jordan. Reason being, he's a, they can only choose one power at yeah, a time. He's a great support piece, but he's not quite over the top. And, like, you'll see him some, but he, they costed him well. He, I think he's balanced. He's got a short dial. They, I think they did him very well. Uh, another one you don't hear about at all is Claw from Avengers Defenders War. He's a pick-a-power piece. Is it just attack powers or something, though? Uh, no, I think he can pick... Two powers. I don't... I, it might be two attack powers. I don't remember because no one plays them, so I haven't really dug into them that much. Yeah. But, again, like, pick a power pieces that aren't ridiculous and dominating the meta, but because Jakeem is so good, people have a bad taste in their mouth about pick a power. And because Goblin King, they were like, what's, what's Jakeem lacking? Let's stick it on Goblin King. Power Cosmic. Done. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jakeem with pick a power was really good because he has the ability to pick two powers. He has limitations, but the limitations don't really stop you from making the character very competitive, even with par or below par stats. So his statistics aren't really great for his point value. I would say they're average. Mm -hmm. And you have average point values that are being backed by an incredible power. The versatility is where his power comes from. Mm -hmm. Being able to choose what you need for every situation. Characters like Nika Minoru and stuff can't do that because 
It's like, hey, I'd, it'd be really good to have Psychic Blast or Pulse Wave or Energy Explosion right now, but I can't choose that and Running Shot or mm-hmm. that and Hypersonic yeah. with whatever else. That's like the pick a power Iron Man. He loses his other powers, and if he has Hypersonic and chooses a power, he can't also choose Hypersonic because he can't use that power. He's basically outwitting himself. Yeah. So, like, there's balance there. I think the biggest thing with Jakeem isn't Jakeem himself so much as the fact that you can put... Like, the, the two things Jakeem is lacking is a damage reducer and willpower. And those are both defense powers. He can only pick one per turn. So, he, they actually balanced him pretty well, but they released him at the same time that we have Supreme Intelligence and Entities. For 12 points. So like, Supreme Intelligence just fixes any problem yeah, that Jakeem Gives him had. stealth and willpower, so okay, now you can't outwit me. And now I've got willpower. And then you put Brainiac or Eclipse on him. All right, now I take Impervious. So if when you do hit me through the stealth, I'm still reducing damage, which leaves me open to take Shape Change and Super Senses, or I can take Hypersonic and whatever. Like It gives you so many more options because of these uh, resources and equipment you can put on him. And just to be clear as far as why you'd be able to attach Supreme Intelligence and... A, uh, Brainiac or something, an equipment piece. So normally you can't attach more than one equipment piece to a character, but you can with Supreme Intelligence because he isn't an equipment piece in his attachment rules. It is kind of something completely in its own realm. He basically says you you put it on the sideline and contribute the powers toward them somehow, but it's not it's, necessarily attached. It's like, yeah, you... you... Pick a character and like link. I don't remember. I don't have the card in front of me. But it's not an equipment piece, it's, so you're able to attach both at the same time, yeah. giving them a, a plethora of powers. Yeah, it's like a resource instead, yeah. I guess. So, it's... but the reason that Unimind just blows him out of the water now, and if they keep Unimind where he's at, he's Jakeem has been replaced in that role. So Unimind is limited to choosing the powers of the characters that he is attached to, the other Eternals. But they gave every necessary power for a combat situation and most defense situations, and even for a fair amount of support situations, they put those powers into those starting clicks of the Eternals characters. So he really has access to a lot of things. The only power he doesn't get that you would like to have is Pulse Wave. Pulse Wave and Energy Explosion. That's literally the only power. If you were to need that. Ever since the Energy Explosion nerf, like it's okay to have, but it's not even that big a deal, yeah. in my opinion. In some situations, I think it could be useful, yeah. but I Like agree. that one uh, gameplay video where you just beat me because of Energy because Explosion. Because of Energy Explosion, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but because it gives you a longer range, so you could really snipe out a team if they're clustered together not expecting it. But you've got the limitation of powers, but he also has a bunch of... He basically has a full dial of his own powers, which a lot of pick-a-power characters don't. They basically replace place the powers that it would, would have with this pick-a-power mechanic. And this character has their own powers, and he functions as his own yeah. character, plus powers. Plus, he has the ability of the double perplex multiple times per yeah. turn, which so he just good. beefs the crap out of stats that are already slightly above average, in my opinion. Yeah, they, they gave him the full package, except a short dial. Like, that was the only thing. They're like, oh, well, he's got five clicks instead of eight or nine, so it's totally balanced. But and that's like, his lowest point value. You have to be able to hit him for it to matter. Yeah. And a 10 range, 21 defense, really hard to get under that range and then hit him. Like, survive. You have to get close enough, survive the counterattack, and then hit the 21 defense. Like, and then the last thing that makes him just over the top is other characters like Jakeem... Gets to, they get to choose powers at the beginning of your turn. You then pick again at the beginning of your turn or when your character clicks and takes damage. So the thing with this is, hey, I want to be aggressive in my turn, and I'm not choosing any defensive abilities on my turn because I'm attacking you. At that point, what I've chosen goes into the next player's turn. They can then attack me. If I haven't chosen something to defend, to defend myself, I'm taking that to the face. Now I've clicked, I've taken damage, and I'm going to change my powers, and now I can be more defensive. And that the clicking to change powers is from the entity, not from the pick of powers. So just to clarify that real fast. Right. So the pick of power himself, does yeah. he just keep it even after he's on, taken damage? On Jakeem, you keep it no matter what okay. until the next turn. Uh, entities, if you click the dial, then, uh, you, take then it. you click the entity's dial and pick a new power. Right. Um, 
Unimind, however, functions completely differently. And it's nuts. It's the beginning of each turn. You pick a power. Which means you can be super aggressive against the opposing character and then, at, at, you know, just destroy their team. And then on my turn, be like, well, you know, I chose super speed and whatever else that was necessary at the time. And now I'm going to choose a defensive power and, like, shape change. And the thing about it, too, is because of the timing, he can take hypersonic speed. He goes and attacks oh crap, I missed, you still have Psychic Blast. Well, I finish my hypersonic speed into a bush, now I can pick Stealth. Or, I run up, I hit you, you lose that, and now you have like a 9 attack, I got a 21 defense. Great, I'm just going to take Prob Control now. So, based on how he does throughout his turn, it changes the power you're going to pick. So, instead of like Jakeem, you pick two powers at the beginning of the turn, and you hope it's still relevant through the rest of your turn. And their turn. <laughs> and their turn. Yeah. Unimind, you pick. You only pick one power instead of two, but then you do your turn, and then you're like, okay, this is where everything stands. I'm glad that I know that I missed that attack. Now I can pick my power accordingly. Right. And it's just, the whole reason, like, Goblin King was ridiculous was because you did a free action to pick a power, so you could have a power carry over into your following turn, use those effects, and then pick a new power. They fixed that. So Unimind, they might look at the way he picks powers and realize that it needs to be adjusted. Who knows? Um, and then I think the, the balance they need to do is make his perplex how it is with all the other Eternals' perplexes, and he can only affect himself. I think that would be the balance, really the biggest thing he needs, because then you can't perplex someone's damage down to a 2 and never be able to take, never damage. take damage. Like, you have to have a 6 damage... Or a way to get to six damage, just to be able to do one damage to Unimind if you can't get through his defense powers. In our Heroclix chat with the guys in Avon Park, they mentioned a nerf that I think would be good, and that is taking away his ability to choose new powers at the beginning of each turn and restrict it back to the beginning of your turn. I think that might be a little too much. Maybe you can pick two powers... One f like if you pick at the beginning of the turn, you pick two powers: one to use for your turn, one to use for your opponent's turn. I think that could be really good too. So at least you're having to make the decision at the beginning of the turn and not after yeah. you've seen everything happen. I think that that would take too much of an errata. I think just saying like just uh, changing it subtly to just at the beginning of your turn that'll definitely bring him down a significant number of points with a very small as far as like competitiveness. Yeah, uh, it'll bring him down a significant portion of his his competitive gameplay but why not because right now he's just going to dominate like anything else so bringing him back into a playing field where characters like jakeem can fight again i don't think would be unreasonable yeah i think one or the other i think if they did both it would be like goblin king and you just wipe him off the map like yeah. you want to you want to keep some level of competitiveness so that the meta isn't just stale and like well jakeem He's really good, but we're comfortable with that. So anything above that, instead of bringing it to Jakeem's level, we're just going to like nerf it, and Jakeem's just going to keep dominating casually. Once we get to a world event, they're going to drop another set, have a new meta piece. It's going to win that, get overly nerfed, and then back to Jakeem on top. We like, I don't want to see though, that constantly happening. I don't think that we would. And the reason for that is we knew that Jakeem was going to get knocked down whenever the new change came to Outwit. Mm -hmm. And we never even got to see that play out because they started coming out with more busted characters after the outweight change. I think that if people tried to bring in... Uh, I, I think if they just wiped the board clean and Jakeem was now the only pick-a-power character, I think you would still be able to make teams that were competitive against him because of outwit. Mm -hmm. so. And I think especially once uh, Brainiac, Eclipso, and Supreme rotate out, Jakeem will be just fine. That's that's really where the abuse comes in, is what you stick on him, not the piece powers. himself. When does uh, Supreme Intelligence rotate? Uh, same time as the... Uh, really? Yeah. Because that's it's, like... It's a 2015 exclusive. Brainiac and them are like straight up on the tail end yeah. Yeah, with the Superman Wonder Woman. Cause Cause it's, it's like one of the last sets in rotation. Because we're looking at uh, going into the third year with Supreme. He just There were a lot of resources out when he came out, so no one cared about him until this year. Right. Because everything else rotated. Yeah. Just like Brainiac and Eclipso were just two of many entities and now they're the two entities yeah so hmm. we'll see what's our time looking like right now 49 minutes 49 minutes so we got time to talk about one more thing one more 
What is it? I don't know. I don't have anything written down. Good. What Star do Trek. So, uh. for anybody you might know, I'm super excited about the Star Trek Away Mission new thingy going on. So, actually, freaking nut sauce here. Let's see what, what's going on here. I don't know how you come up with some of the sayings that you say. <laughs> Are there more pieces that you didn't even see? Is well, no, it, it's in the upcoming set section, so it's not in Modern or Other yet. It's in the same list with Harlequin, so we'll see when that actually comes out where it's probably going. It'll probably go into Other, but I'm always hopeful. So we talked about Trek Four last time, and that was the ships. This is Star Trek Away Missions or whatever, and that is on, uh, it looks like, After Christmas. December 27th, 2017 is the release date. Right now they have released the starter set dials, which includes the original crew, Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, Mr. Scott, Dr. McCoy, and Lieutenant Hora, and <laughs> Lieutenant Ohara, and Lieutenant Sulu. So I'm super excited. It seems like a lot of the characters are kind of like a parody of the show because of the names that they affiliated with a lot of the powers but just to kind of give you a quick rundown the characters are all pretty basic you've got spock with like running shot and psychic blast you got mr scott why does spock have running shot and psychic blast i feel like he's he should have a, like incapacitate well, he has, has sidestep and psychic okay. blast with a six range i was gonna say i just don't see spock just like sprinting yeah like, like shooting things <laughs> like he he puts his, his phasers to stun not like run out and blow you up he's like, the one who's super I, I feel like precision strike would have been best pre- for him precision strike and maybe exploit weakness because of the whole like vulcan nerve vulcan, pinch vulcan yeah vulcan punch <laughs> Vulcan punch. So, and then you've got Mr. Scott, who's got running shot and willpower, and then he gets he gets sidestep and energy explosion, and then he gets telekinesis. I don't know what? what's going on here. What are they? <laughs> Teleportation. Well, maybe maybe yeah. it's going to be like uh, Batman Alpha, where the colors mean something completely different. Maybe. I don't think so. Because <laughs> I think it even came on the card and it showed the same thing. But, uh, you know, telekinesis must be using a transporter. I sure. guess, but I it's, he's in the field if he's on the away team. Like he's got a he's got a miniature transporter. Just like beam me up, me <laughs> beam beam me up, like and move me over about four to six spaces. Okay, so these characters though they have the Federation, uh, United Federation of Planets team ability, which operates like the Justice League or Avengers ability. When this character is given a move action, modify speed by plus one. They have basic roles. You've got running shot. You got you know. Uh, Support on Dr. McCoy. Uh, Lieutenant Ahura has perplex and enhancement for support. And, you know, that's cool, I guess. But they each have a trait that kind of helps the rest of the team. So you'll have one that adjacent Federation characters get plus one to range. Another, they get plus one to defense. Another, they get plus one to speed. So they kind of work together when they're close to each other. I hate those mechanics, especially since none of them have damage reducers. So you cluster up to get these new Federation powers, and suddenly you get beat to poop by one person with energy explosion or whatever else will destroy your team. Yeah. They're each about 50 points, so it'll be a cool thematic little thing. None of it is going to be competitive in any sense of that word, but it still seems neat. Jimmy's still going to get it, and I'll fight against it with uh, my shredders. Right. (laughs) And the one thing that I just want to point out, Captain Kirk, of course, he starts with running shot. With an eight range or an eight speed, he has a six range, eleven attack, eighteen defense with willpower, and a two damage with leadership. But his trait is the Corbomite maneuver, which is an awesome reference. If Captain Kirk is the only character on your force and would be KO'd, you may roll a D6 on a five or six. Deal each opposing character two penetrating damage. If this KOs all opposing characters, turn Captain Kirk to click number five instead of KOing him, which is the last click on his uh, his dial. And he has protected pulse wave, or that power has protected pulse wave, meaning that he could still use it if he's being KO'd by pulse wave. So what I love about this is the Corviknight maneuver is just a big bluff. Like, where he's just like, if you destroy my ship, it will explode and destroy everything within, like, however many light years. Because I have this secret Federation weapon, uh, this, like, material called Corviknight. So... It's totally just made up, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's nothing. He it's makes just it a up. bluff. So the the great thing about this is if he's dying, you have a 33% chance that everybody else dies instead. Yep. And that's so great. On a game well, when you're close, Captain Kirk, 
has the chance to turn it all around, which I think is so thematic for him. Like, I'll play that with my Hive team whenever we get the our brick. Or, yeah. Well, you're going to get a brick while you're in Philadelphia, maybe. Maybe. If you can. It depends. Just, like, ship it back to me since, like, you're flying. We are bringing two extra... Um, like, empty, can carry... Nice. Because yeah. we're able to bring four baggage or whatever the yeah. you know, like check-in check baggage mm-hmm. so we're bringing two empty bags it has so a carry capacity of four i like it yeah yeah it's gonna be great yeah so i've got a thunderbolts theme team i want to play and i'm disappointed you don't want to play a game today well i well, figured we should not, get not, more info out yeah. of harley quinn before it yeah. releases and it's not i didn't want to it's just having the time to record a podcast and do the video and edit both before you leave for Philadelphia. Yeah. So I understand. Made me a little sad though because like I don't get excited about theme teams very often, and I actually was working on my Hydra theme team and I saw that um, Taskmaster had Thunderbolts and Hydra, and so I clicked the Thunderbolts thing and then I saw Baron Zemo and I was because I Wait, thought. Wait, so is, he th- is it a Thunderbolts or a this Hydra? one's this one's Thunderbolts. Okay. The the. I've got another a Golden Age Hydra team I'm working on. Now I want to do a Modern Age Hydra team that's really Avengers, but it's Hydra. Yeah. And I'm going to add an Agent H, so that way I also get Shield. So it'll be a Hydra Avengers Shield theme team with all three team abilities. <laughs> wow. On everyone. It's pretty it's, rough. It's stupid. Not so how many s- points is your Thunderbolts team? 400. It's 390 points, so I'm just going to like slap on two ID cards like Hawkeye, because Hawkeye was a member of the Thunderbolts, but it's the wrong Hawkeye. I was the evil Hawkeye who was actually Bullseye. Yeah, dressed up. he was like yeah. hunting Deadpool, and that was like my favorite comic panel ever. <laughs> Where he shoots the, yeah. the but, but rocket it's, grenade It's thing. thematic to have an overpowered Colin because it's it's in the comics. True. And then I don't know who the other one will be. I have to figure out some way to, to theme team it in. But yeah. that team has Red Leader. It has Baron Zemo. Uh, the super rare from Superior Foes. It's got Taskmaster. It's got the super rare Venom from Civil War. And then it's got Speed Demon from Superior Foes. Yeah. So it's like a super cool team. I like it. And it has the best team abilities for Taskmaster to copy. It's got Masters of Evil and Sinister Syndicate. It's pretty cool. Do you have, what is this, Proteus? No, I did not have the points to stick Proteus on there, and I didn't want to be that cheesy, because I am getting the Masters of Evil, so if I had Masters of Evil and Proteus, Proteus. on Taskmaster with Red Leader, <laughs> go to the Flurry click, give him a 5 damage, and just, like, Flurry, just dominate you. I had to think of, like, appropriate things to say there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. But Taskmaster actually got better, because you can spin him to his Outwit click, Outwit something, and then spin him back to his top dial, and the Outwit still lingers. Yeah. It's true. That's cool. Or does he ever get perplexed or anything like that? It's on his first click, so yeah. You at the beginning of the turn, you have to click him to a different click, and you perplex is now in the window after beginning of turn and end of turn. Right, because free actions it's, it's don't in between those. just take place anywhere. Yeah. So I was hoping that you could perplex and outwit in the same turn with him while also like flurrying and whatever else, but it's not that crazy. Yeah. But Yeah. Hmm. But I'm excited to play that Thunderbolts team. I think it'll be good. I also have that Defenders team still sitting on your shelf that we need to play. I gotta make a new team before I do... Ah, I'm yawning. I'm sorry. I gotta make a 400-point team. Yes, you do. Yeah. I also need a... I'm working on a couple Hydra teams. Like, Hydra is one of those teams you can play at multiple point levels. And I'm also gonna use the Hydra dude in the chair with a bunch of ninjas, because whenever a ninja gets KO'd, you get a Hydra character that's 40 points or less. So if we're just playing to uh, to tabling the opponent, if I set it up right, you will never win, because I've got Mastermind. I Mastermind to a ninja, then on a 4-up, I get a 40-point character, then I can Mastermind to that character and bring the ninja back in, the Mastermind to the ninja and bring that character back in. If you keep rolling 4-ups. Yeah, but I'm going to have like 6 ninjas, so... It'll take you forever to get through all that. Just 50% chance every time. Yep. What if... So does it just say four... Do they have to be called ninja? (laughs) No, it's uh, bring a character with a Hydra keyword from 40 point That is 40 points or less from outside the game. Okay, Hydra keyword. I was going to say, you could use those 35-point robot foot clan characters from the turtle set who also roll, and on a 5 or 6 they come in. 
So you try to kill them and they come Dude, back anyway. It's like we got to do a hand and foot with the ninjas and the um, and I got a ton of those guys because I got that like super massive collection from that dude. It was all just like rares and commons and uncommons and like two super rares. But I got that huge set that had a ton of the turtle generics, like all the the see through yeah Foot Clan dudes. Did it come with any of the the purple robot looking ones? Those are my favorite. Probably not, super good. just because anything that was really good was cherry-picked out, so it was just a lot of very all-right things, Yeah. but it was cool to have. Yeah. That's how I got Baron Zemo, so I'm not complaining. True. All right. I'm done rambling. You got anything else? Nope. I think that's about it for now. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for tuning into this episode of Netflix and Chill. Yeah. If you made it this far, you're a wonderful person, a scholar, and a saint. If you didn't, then Jimmy's going to shave your head. Yeah. So all the people who listened, except to this point, be warned. <laughs> <laughs> except you won't be. Yeah. So I'm coming for you. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Goodbye. See ya.